Hi, my name is Jamel Jones. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Phoenix American Hospitality. And sitting here with me is our CEO, Perch Nelson. How are you doing, Perch? Great. Good, Great. good. Well, hey, Perch, we're here to talk about some very interesting news today. But first of all, can you talk to us about who is Phoenix American Hospitality? Phoenix American Hospitality is an owner-operator of hotels. And what we do is we, uh, we acquire underperforming assets and uh, strive to make them better. Good, good, great. Well, on the text of that, talk to us a little bit about some of these high yields that we're actually seeing in our business right now from an investment standpoint. And how we're able to do that? Yeah, perhaps? yeah absolutely. Well, as, as you've seen and our investors in our read already know that we're paying an average of 11.5% annualized, which is well above market. Wow. So the reason we're able to do that is primarily... There's really two, two important reasons. Number one, we don't have any legacy assets. And by legacy, I mean things that we bought pre-COVID that then transferred over to where we are now. Okay. The reason this REIT was launched was to take advantage of the pricing disparity or the devaluation, if you will, that is a result of COVID on the travel industry. Wow. So when you talk about the travel industry, and that's interesting because on the operation side, what we're seeing is we're seeing high growth in the ref bar year over year, double digit growth up in the 30, 40 percent. So this would translate back to why we see Absolutely. some of the higher yields. But but uh, that's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. There you go. But you've got to also remember the whole legacy asset issue. OK, if we had assets in the suite that were purchased in 2019 or before, that would have drugged that growth down. OK. Okay, so we're it. taking advantage of the upward swing without having that downward trough as well. I got you. I got you. Well, tell me this, Perch. Why are we just now hearing about this? Uh, this is really an interesting thing, and I'm glad you asked me that question because a lot of people, when they see these ads pop up on the internet, they think, you know, this is too good to be true. Why haven't I seen this before? Well, there's really a simple explanation. President Obama, when he was in office, signed legislation that uh, modified the Jobs Act. Now, before, this is a Reg A uh, SEC approved in security. Before this legislation was signed, the Reg A was only a $10 million fund and had high accreditation standards. What he did was he expanded it to $50 million and made the accreditation standards more similar to a publicly traded REIT. Gotcha. But perhaps even more importantly for our investors and potential investors, the reason the reason he, they haven't seen it before is that also modified the ability to advertise, if you will. You could not advertise a private security prior to that time, and that's why you never see it. Now, the, the interesting thing is, he did this while he was in office, but it probably took four to five years for the SEC to interpret the legislation to put the put rules in place. Gotcha. So it's really been in the last year to two years that these things have started to come out. But that doesn't mean it's a sleaze factor, if right. you will. Absolutely. It's now available to use, and we're using it because this is the audience we we want to reach across the fence and not talk to just high net worth people that are accustomed to seeing this. We want to make it, we want to be inclusive for all. Okay, great, great. So you talked about legacy assets with um, Phoenix American. What what, ass, what are those assets that they have? That well, currently we, we have 11 hotels okay. in this REIT. Um, and they're all Marriott and Hilton assets, which are, they're the big gorillas. Okay. Those are the hotels you want, select service hotels. Gotcha, beautiful. Well, I think the one thing a lot of people want to know is when you talk about high yields and you talk about real estate investment, how does that compare to the other investment platforms such as stock markets? Well, it goes back to the legacy asset okay. idea. And I, I don't know about you, but I do know that. <laughs> My daddy taught me buy low and sell so high, right? right? So we're buying low and intend to sell high. So Anything that you see that is publicly traded or really any fund or investment vehicle that's been in existence for over two years mm -hmm. has legacy assets that they're dealing with. Gotcha. And, gotcha. and we just don't do that. And it allowed us to be nimble 
watch and take advantage of the pricing disparity we have now. Wow, that's and, and one other thing, we don't have the overhead. We don't have the cost. Though we're we're publicly report, mm -hmm. we're a private non traded REIT. Okay, but we're approved and we go through the SEC stuff. But uh, that gives us the credibility that we need and a third pair of eyes that are watching everything that we we do. But we don't have the overhead that they have. Wow, that's interesting. I think the one thing a guy like me, normal guy, I, I got a let's say I got an IRA. I want to actually invest. What would you recommend I do with something like that? Or are you seeing stuff like that? That's the absolutely. First thing. Uh, we just closed the month on our investment, and I would say 50% of that in those new investment dollars were from people using their IRAs. Wow. Reallocating it to us. Wow. And a lot of that, I think, is that they're unhappy with the returns that they've seen in the stock market okay. in the last three months. And they're looking for both uh, the stability of real estate, uh, the hedge against inflation, mm -hmm. and uh, higher yield. Wow. You know, that's beautiful. Well, hey, listen, on one last note, is there anything you'd like us to really, really know about these high yields that are taking place today? Well, the one thing I would want to mention, I hope people understand a little bit better of how we're able to accomplish that. But I also want to mention, we're a REIT. And by the IRS standards, in order to maintain REIT status, which is very tax efficient, we have to we have to distribute ninety percent of our operating incomes. <laughs> Excuse me. So what happens at year end? There's kind of a catch up. So at the end of the year, when we do our audit, that we meet that criteria. Because of that, I'm I'm really pleased to say that there's going to be a bonus distribution for everybody that's in the fund as of November that'll be payable in December. Wow. Well, there you have it. Hey, Perch, thanks for your time. We appreciate everything and we look forward to seeing continued our years. Great. Thank you, Jamel. All right. Thank you.